light will be thrown on the origin of man and his history. Ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge. One may say there is a force like a hundred thousand wedges. Such simple instincts as bees making a beehive could be sufficient to overthrow my whole theory. One hand has surely worked throughout the universe. Whilst man, however well behaved, at best is but a monkey shaved. I am convinced that natural selection has been the main but not exclusive means of modification. I have tried lately to read Shakespeare, and found it so intolerably dull that it nauseated me. And thus, the forms of life throughout the universe become divided into groups subordinate to groups. Two distinct elements are included under the term inheritance, the transmission, and the development of characters. The power to charm the female has sometimes been more important than the power to conquer other males in battle. But I am very poorly today and very stupid and I hate everybody and everything. One lives only to make blunders. I love fools' experiments. I am always making them. The highest possible stage in moral culture is when we recognize that we ought to control our thoughts. If any man wants to gain a good opinion of his fellow men, he ought to do what I am doing, pester them with letters. Natural selection almost inevitably causes much extinction of the less improved forms of life and induces what I have called divergence of character. We are not here concerned with hopes or fears, only with truth as far as our reason permits us to discover it. Wherever the European had drawn, death seemed to pursue the aboriginal. There is no fundamental difference between man and animals in their ability to feel pleasure and pain, happiness, and misery. We are always slow in admitting any great change of which we do not see the intermediate steps. The very essence of instinct is that it's followed independently of reason. A scientific man ought to have no wishes, no affections, a mere heart of stone. Only picture to yourself a nice soft wife on a sofa with good fire, and books and music. Often a cold shudder has run through me, and I have asked myself whether I may have not devoted myself to a fantasy. A fair result can be obtained only by fully stating and balancing the facts and arguments on both sides of each question. We will now discuss in a little more detail the struggle for existence. He who understands baboons would do more towards metaphysics than Locke. In conclusion, it appears that nothing can be more improving to a young naturalist than a journey in distant countries. It is difficult to believe in the dreadful but quiet war lurking just below the serene facade of nature. It is necessary to look forward to a harvest, however distant that may be, when some fruit will be reaped some good affected. What wretched doings come from the ardor of fame, the love of truth alone would never make, one man attack another bitterly. Our descent, then, is the origin of our evil passions. The devil under form of baboon is our grandfather. Origin of man now proved. Metaphysics must flourish. He who understand baboon would do more towards metaphysics than Locke. It is always advisable to perceive clearly our ignorance. It is not the strongest of this species that survives, not the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change. I am not the least afraid to die. To kill an error is as good a service as, and sometimes even better than, the establishing of a new truth or fact. I am dying by inches from not having anybody to talk to about insects. Unusual degree. This family became divided eight generations. Sexual selection will also be largely dominated by natural selection tending towards the general welfare of the species. 
intelligence is based on how efficient a species became at doing the things they need to survive. Besides love and sympathy, animals exhibit other qualities connected with the social instincts which in us would be called moral. A man's friendships are one of the best measures of his worth. We stop looking for monsters under our bed when we realize that they were inside us. It is a cursed evil to any man to become as absorbed in any subject as I am in mine. I see no good reasons why the views given in this volume should shock the religious views of anyone. Man is descended from a hairy, tailed quadruped probably arboreal in its habits. I am turned into a sort of machine for observing facts and grinding out conclusions. If the misery of our poor be caused not by the laws of nature, but by our institutions, great is our sin. This preservation of favorable variations and the rejection of injurious variations, I call natural selection.